Hello, my name is Chris Kurzik, and I'm the Principal Engineer at Athabasca Engineering Solutions, AES for short. And uh, what does AES do? Well, first of all, we provide third-party value evaluations. We provide training and certification. We provide equipment re-rating. Our continuing studies of Section 8 Division 1 and we're going through uh, ASB PTB4, which is the 2013, which is the only uh, version that I know of. And uh, we're going to continue to uh, go through this document. And uh, first of all, we're going to look at specifically at Section 8, Division 1, uh, the code in this section, uh, Part 4, Division 1, which I abbreviate shown there. And then we'll look at the Code Case 2695, uh, the, the, what's allowable in Division 2, Part 4 analysis that can be applied to the Boiler Pressure Vessel Code, Section 8, Division 1. Uh, of course, you also have to check with the local authority, but um, the official rules is that um, you can also follow this as well for the design of the torsional head. So let's begin with ASME Section 8, Division 1. Begin our discussion discussing you know, a little bit more about the horospherical head because there's a little bit of confusion. Uh, ASME allows some latitude on the design of it, but uh, in most cases, you you know, it's re I recommend that you just follow the ASME definition of of the uh, torus spherical head. So there's a, some comments in UG32G talks about the knuckle radius, which is shown here. So this part here is what I drew here for the this torus spherical head. So to give you an idea, and outside there is the shell. And so basically you have two rate, you have the small knuckle radius and you've got L, the, the, the crown radius. So let's continue. So so they're saying that R has to be greater than, than or equal to or greater than 6% of the outside diameter of the vessel to which the head is attached. Then they say that R has to be at least three times greater than the knuckle thickness. Okay, those are basic rules that they apply. Then you can, if you follow those, then you can follow all the division one rules, um, you know, and uh, it's a lot simpler. So then you go to UG32I and they talk about an unstayed head. If the unstayed head is, is dished with an inside crown radius where L is equal to the outside diameter, then we've got basically, if you follow all those definitions and we have an ASME type flange and, and people may ask you, okay, well, well, what is this unstayed head? Well, that means a head without reinforcing in it that to make it stiffer. That's basically what it what it basically means. So then I go we go look we're gonna look a little bit closer at torus spherical head and what the de definition is and this is pulled right from part D about how to calculate the thickness. So there's some conditions there talks about for example you know the the thickness over that L which is that you know that radius has to be greater than two. 0 0.002, and the required thickness of the torsional head for the case of, uh, of the knuckle radius is 6% of the inside crown radius, and the inside radius is equal to the outside diameter of the skirt. So it basically, it's all of the definitions we talked about in the previous slide. So you can, you know, once again, you can calculate this in terms of the thickness or in terms of the pressure. Okay, so let's let's do this. And there's some notes here about, you know, if you do have, you know, this condition cannot be met, then you can go to, you know, one for F. So, so then there's some, the, the ASME example on a PTB doesn't really go through this. So I put built this into our spreadsheet so that we can do it a, ch a check. So they, they are saying if you have, you know, high tensile strength materials, which is, you know, 70 uh, KSI, which, you know, you rarely see, but if you're using those materials, then 
then there's they're telling you to you know equate that to 20 20,000 psi at room temperature and in proportion to the allowable maximum stresses in the material okay so that's sort of the setup for that so let's start with our table here so we've got you know uh, a very high uh, temperature. We've got RT, we've got the butt weld, we've got a category of welding, a corrosion allowance. Uh, the inside diameter, the key one is 72 inches. We've got, therefore, the, the crown radius right, needs to be the same. We have a knuckle radius and a thickness, and this is all the basic information provided by uh, example E434. So then we continue on and we, we, we start to do the setup. Uh, we pull this out and, and uh, these, uh, these allowable stresses out. We get the yield stress and we get the tensile stress because we have to check uh, our tensile strength is less than in 70 and we are in this case, so we don't have to make any adjustments. And then we take, the, we need the elastic modulus of the material. So we, we, we put that in, we get that all from, from, um, from the code. And then we make our, our traditional adjustments for a corrosion allowance where the inside diameter two times it corroded the corrosion allowance. So we get the corroded the final condition. And L is that we make the adjustment for L using the corrosion allowances and so on. So we, now we've taken our spreadsheet and we've organized it. I, I've taken five checks here. First of all, I check whether the, the knuckle radius is greater than, than 6%. And this is works. I check whether the, the, the R is greater than three times the knuckle radius, check. I check whether the R is, is equal to the OD for an unstayed head. We talked about what an unstayed head is. We're done with that. Now we check whether TS over L is greater than two. We said yes. So then we use that equation. And then we continue on as the tensile strength less than stress, less than uh, 70 KSI and no. So there's no allowable adjustment required as we talked about in the previous slides. And now we do our calculation because we want to find our maximum allowable working pressure. So we'll we'll take UG32D and we'll we'll work it out in terms of this. But first of all, so we, we go ahead and we calculate our our pressure to be 134 psig. So what we're going to also do is we're going to we're going to do some other checks here. To, we're going to check uh, all we need to do is this calculation. But just for just for interest sake, in case we we needed to go to 14F, what would happen? So uh, we take the equation there, and it's it's a it's a geometry setup, and we get 1.7590, and then we calculate the pressure, and we get basically the same answer. The MAWP, the torus spherical head, we look at the limitations. So if you have an appendix 32, uh, we have local thinning. So we have to be aware of that when we're doing our, our, our hedge calculations. And we have to be aware of minimum thickness requirements of plates. And we have to be aware of under tolerances and the corrosion allowance, just like the previous uh, examples of the heads we've done earlier. So let's going to continue here. So we, we looked at division one. Now we're going to jump into code case 2695. You're going to see how involved it is. And it's a lot more steps, but there's actually some really interesting, um, interesting information that you get from that because there are a lot of steps. You can, it, it, the calculation uh, division two looks at issues like, like the buckling. And so it's quite interesting to sort of go through it, but would I go through, have I ever gone through it for division one calculation? Never, but uh, anyway, so here we go. So this is the division two. And so we, we start off with doing, you know, traditional setups. So we, we take the adjustments for the corrosion allowances and then we continue. So let's keep going. So then we, we go to step two. 
where we take the ratios and we do some checks. So the, the we have to make sure that um, we're following the um, these ratios. Okay, so we have to, L, D over L has to be between these ones as per 435 and it's a pass and R over D has to be greater than this or it's a pass and if it's greater than that then then it's a pass so in um, you know this is if you're doing the, co the code case calculation and and uh, we'll do a future presentation where we'll take this you know a, a, like a, a division two calculation and we'll look at it that way so now we're going to take a look at step three which is shown in section eight division two it's called step three we're going to look at calculating beta in terms of radians and theta in terms of radians. And these are just straight geometry type uh, moves. So that continue. We, we, through step three, we're going to look at this part. So there's a couple of conditions. So if theta is, is less than, than beta, then um, basically we're going to follow this equation here. And if theta is greater than beta, then we're going to follow the simpler one, which is 0.5 times d, and which would be that. For in the case where where theta is greater than beta, then we would use this value. That's all there is to it. Very cookbook. Now we're going to go into step four and we're still going to continue to do our calculations so there's a couple more conditions so this is where we're, now we're looking at the r over d ratio and that's why we did those setups before and this is with if it's less than uh, or equal to uh, 0 0.08 then we calculate this factor here and we continue there with the other condition where it's greater than and then we use this 0.439 value then we continue on with calculating C2, C2. And basically it's a very similar procedure. The equations are not too bad. And we've referenced the equations there in, in, the, in the addition we looked at, which is a 2019. And we calculate the C1 and 2 values with step number four. Now we continue we actually now we're getting some actual information at this point we need that we needed c1 and 2 to put our values inside here here's where we took you know uh, these other values like the modulus elasticity rate and and we, we calculated uh, rth earlier and we this is 436 and then we calculate that the pressure to buckle this 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 uh, a knuckle is really really high, which you know which is really interesting just to you know give you an idea how strong that knuckle is and it's amazingly strong and and this calculation is only available in division division two. So let me on with step six and we're going to determine a few other interesting variables. Uh, for example, we're going to step six, we're going to calculate the value of internal pressure that would result in maximum stress in the knuckle equal to the material yield. So in this case, um, we're, we're only allowed to use time independent properties for the code case from what I interpret. And so we make, so we set C3 equal to the yield, which we, we found earlier. And then we calculate we put C3 into the calculation as shown, and these ones we've got, we've calculated earlier, we determined earlier. And then at the end of the day, we've got 98.8 PSI G for, the, for that uh, internal value of stress. So that, that's interesting. So then we go ahead and then we calculate, we go to step seven and we calculate the value of internal pressure expected as a result of buckling failure of the knuckle. And then, so first of all, we have to take this ratio and we, we, we determine that to be 54.152, that's a dimensionless number. But we use that, we feed it into this really 
horrible equation. And uh, uh, it's g is equal to 1, um, 1 0, and this is equation 4.319. And we calculate the pressure to be basically 200 psi. And, you know, and then in the case of where g is less than or equal to 1, then we can use a simpler version and we get this number. But in our case, because, you know, g is greater than 1, we have to use the, um, the equation there, which is basically the 200 psi. So we're going to continue on for the next few steps here. Then we calculate the allowable uh, pressure based on the buckling failure of the knuckle. And then we put our little little correction factor in here because, you know, uh, to take into effect of, of you know, the, the basically the, the uh, allowance, safety allowance. And we, we reduce that down to 133 PSI. And this matches pr pretty close to the example. And we calculate the allowable, step nine, we calculate the allowable pressure based on the rupture of, of the crown. And we can see, and this is quite interesting because again, it's only available in two. So we use this relationship and we found out that it's quite a bit higher, which is what we, we would expect. So our vulnerability, you know, is at the knuckle. So then we basically, step 10, we take the minimum of these two values and we determine it to be 133. So what, what can we determine? Well, we went through division one, which was a lot simpler, especially if you use an ASME head, which is what I would recommend. And I believe like the, the, some, the, the head vendors that I've dealt with, they would only use that anyways. But you're going to calculate it and your stresses are basically going to be the same. There's a little bit of a rounding error there. But uh, what was also interesting finding is when we did that detailed calculation division two, we found out that, you know, the weakness is in, in the knuckle, it's not in the crown. And which is what we would expect. I hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you. This was provided by Athabasca Engineering Solutions. We'd love to hear your feedback and, and your thoughts on further videos. And we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now.